Welcome on Palm Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Sunday Gospel reading is according to St. John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Before your passion. 
Continuing now with confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in heaven. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this day of the Palm Sunday, also the Sunday of the Passion of our Lord, is according to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 36 through 39. The Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none remaining, bond or free. Then he will say, where are their gods, the rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering? Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What wondrous love is this? The gradual hymn 543. I will sing the first three verses as it is a newer hymn. And we invite you to join with verse 4. Join the theme, I will 
você And when from death I'm free I'll sing on, I'll sing on And when from death I'm free I'll sing on And when from death I'm free I'll sing His love for me And through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on And through eternity I'll sing on The Epistle reading is according to Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11 Have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing verses 1 and 2 of the Gospel Anthem 440. Jesus, I will ponder now. stand as you're able for the verse. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Instead of us, Lord. 
Gospel is according to the congregational reading of Luke chapters 22 and 23. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death. Oh, then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the presence of the crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, The Gentile, or the kings of the Gentiles, exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is the greater, one who reclines at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my Father assigned to me, a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, so that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. And he said to them, 
When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, Nothing. He said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack. And let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood, falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, and one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house, and Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, this man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly, this man also was with him, for he too is a God but Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, if you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, 
You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had long desired to see him because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate, and Herod, and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done to by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man to us, us. A man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the Skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
and they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed just be, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he raised his eyes. Now, when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea, he was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and saw how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Now follows the hymn of the day, 438, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth.
Today's message is entitled, That Your Faith May Not Fail. These are distracting times. The world steadily promotes its changing views of truth. It tends to appeal that right and wrong are relative to what's in it for those concerned. Lifestyles contrary to God's commandments are paraded as politically correct. While faith that confesses trust in the way of Jesus who is himself the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father, is turned aside as intolerant and unfair. Motivating the world's incessant efforts to twist the truth to its own will and way is Satan, the tempter. He seeks ever to pry human hearts from God's will, He works to raise doubt about God's word. He incites questions and substitutes the meaning of truth, all to dethrone the Lord from his rightful place in the hearts of all who should believe in him. So how does faith come? How does faith counter? How does faith discover and hold on to the truth? Faith is God's gift, and that makes the difference. His Holy Spirit testifies to the details of the life and obedience of Jesus Christ to accomplish his Father's perfect will. That provides the content for faith. This faith results in living hope. The Spirit inspired the apostles and evangelists to proclaim God's saving and gracious way in his word. This word brings certain life where distracted disbelief resulted in defeat and death. The Spirit, through the word of life revealed in Jesus Christ, shines the spotlight on the realities and struggles of distracted people who slipped and failed in faith and lifts them up again. His power to lift you up, to restore your soul, draws from the account of the passion of Jesus Christ. We heard again today, just now, the details of his account for the living truth that sets us free. The Son of Man offered himself in obedience to his Father in heaven. God's covenant promise to save his people from their sins was fulfilled in the details of Jesus' life, poured out as it is told for us to hear and believe. And so we heard today, We heard of his gracious compassion and service. We heard of Jesus' perfect obedience to his Father's will. We heard of his humble suffering on account of that obedience and seeing his resilient follow-through to bear the stripes and blows of human rejection and mockery to atone for our doubt and disobedience to suffer crucifixion lifted up high upon the cross we discover the depth of the love of our God who made us his love is for us by faith restored by the new covenant of Jesus body and blood given for you You can rely on this God. By faith restored by the content of all Jesus accomplished by his passion for you. You can rely on this God. Jesus did not come merely to suffer and die. He came that by his suffering and death, he would free you 
and me from our sins that distract us, sins that lash us to guilt, that bind us to death, that cause us anguish and terror that would result in abandonment from God in hell. Jesus did this all to save you. May I leave you this word of promise as we heard from Jesus. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. The Son of Man beheld us in our failures. He does not despair. He prays. He intercedes for you. He upholds you in prayer. That your faith may not fail. Doubts and denial, even betrayal, all sins were born and carried by Jesus, the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. So his word works ever to turn your heart and my heart from our distrust and failures. And confessing them exactly for what they are, Jesus turns us further around than we could imagine. He calls us by name into the living faith that receives his forgiveness and assurance and in turn empowers us to encourage one another. So be strengthened, dear sisters and dear brothers, in Jesus, your Savior. Please stand and we join in confessing the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayer of the Church in peace let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for a mind like Christ Jesus to spurn all worldly equality that we would humble ourselves here and find his greater portion in the life of the world to come let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the Church of Christ, that her faith would remain fixed upon his death for our salvation, 
and that his gospel would be proclaimed and lived out until he comes again in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all Christian fathers, that receiving Christ, the Heavenly Father's Son, who was sacrificed for them, they in turn would be enlivened to sacrificial love for their own children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those in authority over us, that they would have the same mind as Christ, who sacrificed himself for us, and so fulfill their duty even to the least. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who suffer in this world, especially all persecuted Christians, those suffering due to war in Ukraine, oppression in the Middle East, ethnic cleansing in Africa, and wherever there is injustice, for those burdened by health and various challenges they face, Klaus, Rita V, retired pastor Michael, Gary P, Lee and Linda, Hulda, Shirley K, Renee, Michelle, and these we name before you now. My sister Leah. Simon and his mother Adele. Megan. That they would not fear but fix their eyes on Jesus as they await the fullness of their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show to us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna, save now in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We bring forward the offerings, and I will also prepare the table. Peace of the Lord be with you, Judy. Please stand as we join in the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross that where death arose their life also might rise again and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. be seated. The hymn before distribution, the Lamb. Half the 
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Worship concludes with hymn 444. No. 
the soldiers upon